All right, so I got a plugin today that I'm super excited to talk about. This is something that I, I'm shocked it took Waves this long to release this, but this is what I consider a game-changing plugin. Basically, you can take any Waves effects you have, any of them, and you can, um, you can add them in a chain, and you can also take that chain, and at any point along the insert path, you can you can split things out into uh, parallel processing or multi-band processing. So basically, you can turn, you could take your, you know, Renaissance compressor and split up your band into five different frequencies and put a compressor on each band and just make your own multi-band compressor out of any compressor you want. You could put Arvox on, on, you know, the mid-range. You could put Renaissance compressor on the low end. You could do the V comp on the high end and then put a chorus on it. Um, so this is an amazing plugin that I'm waiting a long time for and I'm pretty excited to show it to you. And I was actually, the reason I was really excited about Studio Rack is because this could allow um, an engineer to do mixing processes that would usually take, uh, you know, all comping tracks, like duplicating tracks and then blending them together and applying separate inserts on each track, taking up, you know, headroom in your project, uh, CPU headroom, and just, you know, um, there's, there's a delight to doing things the old school way, but this could also speed things up. And definitely there are projects where you want things to go a bit more quickly. So let's uh, switch over to Logic here. And I have um, a song loaded up here, same one as last time, heavy rock song. And this one has um, bass guitar on it here that I, wound up splitting up into multiple tracks. Uh, let's take a listen here. All right, so I have a bass group here. Um, I'm gonna expand this. And you can see the processing that I had to do here. Um, I actually, here I'm gonna expand this so you can see the EQ. Um, I was actually using the uh, bass melting uh, that Warren Huart has popularized in his video um, about mixing bass. I urge you to see that. I'll uh, add a link um, up above and below because it's an amazing uh, tutorial. And it really is. It's just this is the time uh, held tradition of, of mixing bass, especially acoustic bass or electric bass, sorry, with, uh, with its wild dynamics, uh, and frequency responses, you have to split it up and control it. So basically what I did here, um, is I took the DI bass. Um, so just one channel of bass took the DI bass. Um, and on the first channel, I did a, uh, low pass, or a high cut filter at 200, so it's just the low frequencies. Then I added a compressor with fast attack and a pretty fast release um, to catch all the uh, all the peaks. And then you duplicate that compressor and you just put with a higher ratio, um, anywhere from like 25 to 30. Basically you're putting a limiter after the compressor so you can catch some even more peaks. So that's doing some light limiting on that. And then you go ahead and you copy that track over and then you high pass um, everything at 200 up. So you have one channel, that previous channel was just the low end. This new channel is um, the higher end of the bass. And then you can, then you go ahead and you do similar compression on this. So again, a compressor with the, um, with the fast attack and release. Um, so see here if I'm playing this. Actually, this is pretty light. I could probably go a little heavier on that, but uh, I guess I had my reasons at the time. I'm going to put some more compression on there to increase the gain. So let's take a listen here. I'm going to solo this, actually. So this is everything together. So that's just the low channel. This is low passed. And we'll check out the uh, high pass channel. A basically unprocessed um, high mids. And yeah, so I have the two compressors on this. And then uh, 
what he did in the video is he uh, replicated the the high pass section here, and then you run a nice little um, overdrive on this. So even though this is just the uh, the DI signal, just the direct signal, um, you can simulate the amp sound by putting whatever overdrive or uh, fuzz pedal, whatever kind of distortion you want in here. You can put you can put an amp um, in here if you wanted to get more of an amp sound, and then you blend this back in to taste with the um, essentially unprocessed high pass channel and the low pass channel. So let's take a listen. So basically we got three channels here working in concert and I can uh, blend these things to taste so I could just I could totally remove this clean channel if I wanted if I just wanted to get like a really gritty kind of uh, Ampeg SVG type sound or I could make that really subtle if I wanted a cleaner bass And it's very clean, kind of boring. For this song, we definitely want more of an aggressive sound. Let's uh, bypass these compressors here. Oh, these ones as well. You can see the dynamics are more all over the place. Put these back on. Actually, what I'm going to do here is, uh, so here's the original, that's the original bass as played. That's the directly into the board. Oh, sorry. That is the DI bass. I bypassed all EQ and compression on the uh, group channel, so. That's the naked bass. Um, so what I'm going to do here I guess the whole point of me showing you all this is you can see, like it takes a little while, you have to duplicate each track and apply individual settings to it. And frankly, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing this. Um, but like I was saying earlier, um, it can be time consuming. If you need to do a quick mix, maybe a board mix, get you know, to a client or, you know, like you just prefer doing it this way. It's a, it's a nice option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to like recreate this with the studio rack. Cause that's why I was so excited to get this plug. And the first thing I thought was this is going to make bass malting so much easier and you can just go wild with it too. Um, and if you don't like it, you can just delete that insert and start over or go back to the old multi-track malting method if you like. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, take the DI bass track here. I'll just copy this one. I'm going to pull this out of the bass group. And we'll say DI bass studio rack. Uh, where is this? I'm going to uh, delete all plugins. Let's have a listen. So there we have it. Yeah. Totally dry bass. I mean, we know this is not going to hold up in a mix. Let's check this out. I mean, basically, I cranked that up and what? You got. You can kind of hear the <laughs> you can hear the high notes just because they're not getting swallowed by the guitars. So that's definitely why we need to even out the frequencies here. When you got to get a bigger bottom end on this, we just need a heavier sound overall. So let's solo this, and um, I'm gonna insert Studio Rack. All right, so here we go. So we're kind of um, presented with a pretty straightforward interface here. 
Um, so the first thing I want to do with this is to split it um, with a multiband. So this is essentially going to give us, uh, I just need the two channels here. This makes it quite easy, actually. All I have to do is enter 200 here. And I've instantly got a, a split between um, the low frequencies and the high. So let's take a listen. And solo this. And I'll solo the high pass. So there you go. We've got like our string grit and growl on the top. And we have the sub low end isolated on the bottom. So see, as soon as I hit multi-band multi -band split, hit 200, we're starting to be off to the races here. So first thing I'm going to do, I don't have to insert an EQ anymore like I did before. So first thing I'm going to do is just... Uh, Let's get a compressor going here. Use the R, and co R comp here. I'm going to switch off the uh, warm setting because that, ins that inserts um, or adds uh, low frequency harmonics to the signal. I don't really want that right now. Um, so let's go with the standard uh, 3 to 1 compression. Go with a 10 millisecond attack time and I guess 80 on the release. And I'll bring down the threshold so until we catch some peaks here. Let's do nice and aggressive on this. And we can see that uh, bottom end is really. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to solo this. So we can see the compressor is really catching those big low end things, which is great because they're much louder, um, at least in bass frequency energy than the high notes. So this would be great. So we're getting some good compression here. Let's compensate for that a little bit. Okay, and then the next step in the Warren method is we duplicate this compressor set the ratio high, like 25. For some reason, Waves doesn't want me to do exactly 25. All right, and then we're going to get this doing some more limiting. So we got some pretty strong compression happening here. Do some gain compensation. Cool. Okay, now we can move on to the high pass channel. And I'm lazy, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this over with uh, option click or alt click, if you will. So, yeah, we got some, some strong peaks here. So, we got a pluckier sound. This is catching all the kind of plectrum sound. I believe I was using a, a pick on this one. So let's just uh, dial this in so we see the uh, peaks getting nice and smushed here. I'm going to duplicate this. We're going to go to our limiting setting. Gain compensate. So you can hear that's sounding a little less raw now. Okay, let's uh, put these together. Yeah, it's definitely sounding smoother. All right, so um, now it's time for the fun part. I'm actually going to move these down a slot because I need to uh, break this out here. So we've done a multiband split. Uh, this is one of the big features of Studio Rack. So you get your low frequencies and your high frequencies. Now, so for the high pass, you remember before um, when we had the three channels, we have a distorted bass channel. So normally what you do is you duplicate that channel 
the, the high pass channel um, and then apply whatever uh, distortion you want and uh, put your compressor afterwards. So um, before I do any compression, I'm going to do the parallel split. So the bar parallel split, um, basically all this does is it duplicates that channel. Um, there's, there can be some confusion between parallel processing and serial processing. And basically parallels just side by side. It's like creating a new track. Serial processing is, is what we're seeing here is effects just go into each other sequentially. But if I put something here, it's going to be separate, completely separate on the exact same signal. So here, I'll, I'll switch this on. So right now, we're hearing the 200 hertz high pass signal twice. And I want that because on this, I'm going to put an overdrive. Just put a nice little bit of fuzz on that there. So now, like here where we control our, um, our high mids that were clean and the distorted, and you can balance between them. Now I can do that here. So that's, this is 100% distorted. Or I can blend this in. So, I'm just gonna, uh, let's just put these back to zero. So I think what I'm gonna do is keep the distorted high and bring this clean one down quite a bit. Okay, so now we've got our three channels. Um, you know, I can just go into the parallel split anytime and just, you know, change that however I like. It's beautiful. And I can also, you can pin things. So if I hit that pin, That'll just stay there, which is good because I want to be able to come back to that without clicking this. So that'll, when I when I do the pin, it pins it in place. It'll always be visible. And so this brings us to the last stage, which is we want to do a little bit more processing on the overall sound. So in order to get that nice uh, low end, uh, what we do is we put in an equalizer. And we want to uh, get rid of some of the rumbling low frequencies. I'm going to do this at 60 because we got guitars in here. This is a busy mix. We want the kick drum to come through. So I'm going to do 60. And then uh, you can take a high shelf and, you know, boost anywhere from, you know, 60 to 120, probably more like 80 to 120. Um, I'm going to do a boost here, a nice healthy boost at, um, at 100 with a high shelf. And that's going to, that's going to bring up the subs. Check that out. So this kind of does a nice general boost in all the subby areas. So it's even going to hit some of that 80, but you then you have a nice cutoff here with the, uh, with a high pass. Yeah. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do an exaggerated low end, and then we're going to do another compressor after this, which will kind of clamp down on the out of control sub. So it's not taking over everything. While we're here, we might want to add a little bit of bite to it. And uh, we can do a, we can do a high cut here. I mean, there's not really anything going on in this space above like 7k let's put that on there and guard some of our guitar frequencies so you can hear that big bass boost right we like to go really wild on this sometimes it's all good because it's going to get compressed now so now it's time for our compressor to come back let's go load up my uh, bass comp preset so you can see we still got some uh, peaks here. So we can get those big bottom end peaks out of the way. So 
So there you go. Now we have a nice leveled off base. So that's the original. And here it is with all the multi-processing. So you can even see here on the meters. Let's go, let's switch it off again, take a look at the meters. Bang, bang, bang. You can see those jumping around. We have much steadier meters now. There's still some jumping here. I'd be tempted maybe uh, put a limiter on here. to get even more control over this. Yeah. You can put a limiter or a clipper on if you want that to get even more steady, but I mean, it sounds nice and smooth. Let's put it in the mix. Use a little bit more gain here. So there's the original bass that I did. Here's the new one. Let's get these, uh, let's get the levels matched. There it is in the mix. You can hear uh, big, solid, even low end. You can still hear the, pl the plectrum going. Let's mute it. Miss it when it's gone, eh? So that's pretty cool, eh? Another neat trick we can do go back to our uh, parallel channel here. Say if you're doing more of a, uh, a let's copy this to our B channel. Okay. So um, say if you're doing more of a traditional bass sound, nice and clean, say it's pop song or something, you can go ahead and um, Put a chorus on this. Actually, I really like doubler as a chorus. Yeah, check that out. I could put that on the distorted channel if I wanted to. Let's see here. See, now we got a nice big stereo bass if we want. This is something you could pop on like during during the chorus or something. Sometimes a little bit of uh, a little bit of chorus modulation on the bass can really help it uh, stick out in the high end. Subtle, but it's there. That's another great feature with all the Waves products. You've got your uh, you got your AB switch. 
So I can make those subtle changes. If I don't like it, I can go back to my A version, compare the settings, compare the levels. It's wonderful. All right, so yeah, I think that uh, that covers it for the studio rack for now. Um, I'd actually like to do another one on this, more of a sound designy one, because with the with the multi band multi band split and parallel, I mean, you could do you can keep adding bands. I think up to five. Yeah, you can f five different bands here, and inside these bands, you can do a parallel split. You can process this band twice. Inside here, you can do a multi-band split inside a parallel split inside a multi-band. <laughs> now, of course, uh, the thing is you have to bear in mind, there's a whole thing like, like you're splitting the band in these crossovers. They're not linear phase, i.e. They, they will introduce um, phase at those crossovers. So if you start going nuts, you might hear some weird things happening with the signal. It's something to keep an eye on this phase when you're doing a lot of uh, multiband processing. But, you know, it's uh, pretty amazing that there's, there's an endless amount of possibilities with this. Uh, and I'm pretty, pretty darn excited about it. This has become like overnight uh, a, a go-to plugin and I think it's one of Wave's best move in decades. So yeah. That's the studio rack. Um, if you like my video, please like and subscribe. So I have a lot of content coming out soon. So keep an eye on the channel and thanks for watching. Bye.